Afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Marley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 30th, 2020, recorded around 2.17 p.m. Eastern Time. Right now, we are taking a look solely on Tropical Storm Isaias, which right now is in the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola, causing torrential rainfall well to the east of the center in Puerto Rico, uh, where some very significant heavy rainfall has taken place there over the last several hours or so, even beginning since last night. Currently on its current projected forecast path, this is expected to cross over Hispaniola tonight with a center reformation likely and likely taking place now on the north side of the Dominican Republic and eventually track over towards the west. And the, the consensus today has been for uh, the forecast guidance to shift generally and further towards the west. And this is very consistent with the National Hurricane Center forecast where this is expected to pass right over almost some of the Bahama Islands right there, including Nassau, if we zoom in here. Again, this could get pretty close to portions of uh, the areas that were impacted by Hurricane Dorian last year, eventually kind of skirting the Florida coastline here, making a very close approach uh, within about 100 miles or so is certainly possible, and then turning up and uh, making its beeline or next beeline towards the Carolinas, uh, where eventually this could make landfalls somewhere here or it could also stay just offshore. Uh, right now, regardless, impacts are expected to begin for the Bahamas as soon as really tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then for Florida and the Florida Peninsula, especially uh, the further south you go towards Miami and the Florida Keys, potentially even seeing impacts beginning really on uh, Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon and evening. For the Florida Peninsula, really from Orlando northward from about uh, Sunday morning and then continuing on through Monday and then eventually continuing up on potentially into the Carolinas here. And the National Hurricane Center does know as of the 2 o'clock advisory, this could uh, pose a threat uh, to become a hurricane and a tropical storm or hurricane watches could be issued and required for portions of the Florida Peninsula later today or tonight. So we will be keeping tabs on that here uh, over the next while. Now taking a look at what's really going on though with excuse me the IR satellite presentation here this is coming from tropicaltippets.com. I hate the buffering on this. But anyway, this comes from tropicaltippets.com. And again, you can clearly see that we have showers and thunderstorms associated with this mid-level circulation. That's what this is, a mid-level circulation center right now to the north of the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. Our low-level uh, center is actually roughly in through here in the Dominican Republic. And... Again, we talked about how eventually this was going to start moving off towards the west-northwest. Now, it's booking it here about 20 miles per hour, but we are likely to see a new center reform in here. And once that happens, then this will change the track and intensity forecasting by a pretty fair margin. And that should allow... Uh, for us to better understand what is going to happen with uh, Tropical Storm Isaias as it continues north into the Bahamas. Again, this is the Turks and Caicos right here, and impacts could begin as early as uh, later tonight and through early tomorrow morning and continuing on. That's the tip of Cuba right there. That's Haiti, uh, and obviously Hispaniola as a whole is right here. That's Puerto Rico. So again, Puerto Rico is still getting slammed with some of those spiral bands, but overall the, the appearance is much better today with Isaias. Now, reconnaissance aircraft, we talked about this earlier this morning on the update, but the reconnaissance aircraft that was in there uh, from earlier this morning did find a couple of interesting things. First of all, you notice how erratic the winds are here on the southern side. This is where we have or did have our old low-level center of circulation. That center has now moved and is moving inland now over the Dominican Republic. This center is likely dissipating, if not dissipated already, and we are getting a new center to reform to the north in this general area. And you notice by the recon, uh, the, the flags here, on the wind barbs as they kind of came up through here you notice that there's not really any turning in this region uh, from earlier this morning this was about eight o'clock this morning but you notice what we do have some hurricane force flight level winds up here very indicative of that deeper convection that was associated and still is associated kind of curling up into this area 
and recent surface observations do show that we could have a new center and a new low forming right here. We'll have to wait uh, to see when we can get another recon uh, plane in there, which should be later this evening. But this is really going to determine whether or not we get a strengthening cyclone on approach to the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas over the next few days or so. Again, the maximum uh, surface winds uh, recorded by the Step Frequency Microwave Radiometer, or the SFMR, was about 60 or it was about uh, 55 knots, or about uh, 65 miles per hour. So the initial intensity is held at 2 o'clock, and at 11 was held at 60 miles per hour. So a couple of interesting things today that's kind of going on, and we want to kind of break it down for you in a, a shorter, but kind of a, a realm where you guys can understand. So first. First of all, what we're taking a look at here, this is the European model, the 500 millibar geopotential height, basically the our strength of the ridge and its associated weaknesses at about the 18,400 18, uh, foot level in the atmosphere. These darker reds and your lighter reds are your stronger high pressure areas. And what you're seeing, this is the uh, analysis time as of 7 a.m. this morning. That was our low pressure center located uh, to the east of the Dominican Republic and west of Puerto Rico. If we move that out here to 24 hours, the European is in stark contrast uh, to what it was uh, earlier. It is further to the south, a little bit weaker in this run, but you notice there's, the strength of the ridge is quite a bit uh, still there. It's cer certainly still there, and, and you might uh, kind of be wondering, well, what's kind of keeping this from going northward all the sun? Well, a weaker system is going to tend and, and trend more towards the west. So what we're, what we're seeing is initially a little bit of a weaker vortex column, which doesn't extend as far into the atmosphere. But after we get to the next about 48 hours or so, if that wants to update, there we go. After we get to the next 48 hours, this is on 12Z Saturday, August 1st, or 7 a.m. on this Saturday. Now the storm is approaching here. It's starting to gain some latitude as it's approaching the Bahamas and the South uh, Florida Peninsula right here. Now what's beginning to happen is this trough axis that's kind of positioned right here is now beginning to shift a little bit and that's now starting to erode this subtropical Bermuda high out here. This high pressure is actually moving further to the east while this trough here is kind of digging in forcing it east and kind of eroding it. That now leaves an alleyway you can kind of see that now leaves a little excuse me a little bit of an alleyway for this storm to turn up and kind of come like that. And indeed, on the European forecast here, this gets very close to Florida. This is talking uh, by 7 a.m. Sunday, according to the European. You notice the trough, or the, the ridge of high pressure, rather, is starting to build back into its north. This trough is a little bit weaker, but it's still trying to dig in. So it's kind of forcing this a little bit like that. And then eventually, as we go on through 96 hours, now you notice how this trough of low pressure now starting to really dig in. Pressure's down to 991 on the euro. Eventually, 987 pulling it up here close to uh, the Outer Banks and close to the Carolinas. The strength of the ridge is kind of building up like that, so the storm all the way out to see something like that. It just can't do that. This uh, trough right here is kind of picking it up, but this ridge is still kind of hanging on, and you see where this is a conflict of interest out to the next five days, getting dangerously close here to uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina and the Carolinas as a whole, and getting dangerously close to the Bahamas and Florida. Now, how does this uh, appear on the GFS model? The, this is the same parameters uh, on the GFS, the same uh, product that we're looking at. This is valid as of um, 2 o'clock this afternoon, so just about 26 minutes ago now. Pressure is about 999, so close to what we have. The pressures right now are about 1,003 millibars, so it's pretty close. And you notice the strength of the ridge axis right here. This ridge is pretty strong, kind of nosing its way in. We have a secondary uh, kind of high pressure system over here. And again, you don't notice really any troughiness. It's almost all zonal flow across here in the upper levels of the atmosphere. 
as we progress throughout the next 24 hours or so, however, that begins to significantly change in the model field. First of all, our high pressure ridge is still trying to hold on here. You can kind of see it nosing in there. But you also notice here we have this trough axis right here that's dipping in. And now what that's going to do, that's going to start to erode this high pressure ridge and erode this gradient. As such, you notice here by the next 48 hours or so, now we have much uh, of a different change here. First of all, our ridge axis is now beginning to erode here. You kind of notice that its influence uh, within the, the atmosphere is now starting to abate while we have this trough right here that's kind of digging in. And now what this is trying to do is pull the vortex up to the north here. It's trying to pull this tropical cyclone up to the north, but this ridge of high pressure is still keeping it kind of west. So the general trend today has been further, a little bit further to the west, closer to the Bahamas and Florida. If we make this out here to the next about 84 hours, uh, the GFS down to 981 millibars, the strength, uh, we got another little system right here, maybe Josephina, potentially, but we do have this ridge axis that's kind of sitting right through here with this trough now really beginning to dig in, carrying this almost out here. And you notice that there's almost a pathway to land here. And as such, by the 102 hour time frame, by uh, Monday on August 3rd, now this is starting to get very dangerously close to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Now, how does this uh, play out here in the uh, Horf pair? We kind of skipped ahead to it, but how, how does this kind of work out in the parallel version of the h Wharf model? This is the newest version of the h Wharf that is expected to come out next week. So let's see how it's doing. So first of all, this is at 12Z, or this is the analysis time, at 7 a.m. this morning. You notice where the recon found the stronger winds, we're seeing that show up in the model field. A very weak vortex here, very weak uh, cy cyclone here showing up. Uh, in the H wharf. Eventually, this brings us over, and you notice kind of that jump here between 18Z today and 21Z tonight. This is uh, roughly right uh, before at about uh, 6 uh, p.m. this evening. This is now beginning to undergo uh, this low transfer from the no from the south and the Dominican Republic to now uh, right along the coastline here. Pressure's down to 999 here on the H wharf. Now, as we go out through that, the next 24 hours, this progresses down to uh, 995 here, eventually getting pretty close here to the Bahamas. And again, it's just something to be mindful of. The h wharf eventually brings this, uh, we'll kind of use the distance measuring tool from tropicalzibits.com, roughly about 80 miles offshore of Florida. And this brings it almost right over Grand Bahama, pretty close to Nassau, the Turks and Caicos. So for you folks down here in the Turks and Caicos, you certainly need to be monitoring the progress of this now because impacts are going to begin very soon. If you live in Florida, you still have a little bit more time to monitor this, but watches are likely to go up later this afternoon or evening. And with it being uncomfortably close here on the H Wharf, about 70 to 80 miles offshore, this has significant implications because th this could bring higher impacts to those areas. Now, if we take a look at one possible such scenario, this is the uh, UK Met, the um, the Europe, uh, the, or not the Europe, this is the United Kingdom uh, Met model, the UK Met model. And a couple things to point out here, this is uh, taking a look from PivotalWeather.com, and just to kind of give an example of what could happen, we kind of notice as we kind of progressed uh, down through here, let's uh, kind of get that right there, there we go. As this kind of progresses uh, forward here, you notice that the cyclone here, this is, um, this is valid as of uh, Sunday at 7 a.m. We have a pressure of 992 sitting right off of the Florida coastline here. I mean, right off the Florida coast. And eventually here, that continues to sort of move and deepens this into a hurricane uh, very close uh, to the Bavard County uh, line there. This is uh, pretty much right uh, paralleling Bavard County. And for reference, that would be coming very close if we just kind of backed us up here. This will be coming very close 
run something like that on the UK Met model to Bavard County and the Space and Treasure Coasts here. So this is certainly something to watch and eventually the latest model here deepens this pretty rapidly and this is certainly a, a more far-fetched pressure. Uh, there, there is a lot of uh, hurdles for this system to go over. Needless to say, this is our experimental uh, wind graphic threat. We have increased the potential for a wind uh, threat here in portions of central Florida. So for real quick scale here, the low uh, scale were these very, uh, these very bright or kind of very pale colors almost, if you will, uh, represent very low colors, which is not even on the scale, but this represents less than 34 or 39 mile per hour winds. Once you start getting into the low, which is your uh, deeper, uh, these uh, deeper yellows, that's typically when you now start to see those 34 to 53 mile per hour winds and your moderate, which is your orange, is your 50, uh, 53 to, or basically like 53 to about 73 miles per hour. And certainly we have started to increase those potentials with the moderate uh, risk potential now beginning to spread here into uh, portions of the uh, Florida coastline here. Again, this is very experimental. This is something that I'm doing. This is not official from the National Hurricane Center. So if you guys do want official, um, you know, the official forecast, check out your local weather service office and local hurricane center and, and we're in the National Hurricane Center down there in Miami for the official information. This is what I'm developing based on the, with the threats that I'm seeing alone. But again, this is something that we'll have to watch. Again, not really set in stone. And this is subject to change here uh, over the next several days or so. One thing to point out here is, once again, for folks who are just new, uh, we have been developing our unmanned camera system project for quite a long time now, for about uh, two and a half to three months. And over the recent months, we have tested, tested, and tested, and finally, we have uh, this uh, being able to go fully operational. This basically right here, we'll zoom in. Uh, this is our camera box right here. And these are our ratchet straps that are tied down to the tree. Uh, this is where the camera with the camera would be right there with our little, uh, little kind of hole right there for the camera to see out of. Uh, if you do go want to support uh, what we're doing, make sure to go uh, follow me here on YouTube. Go uh, follow me over on Twitter at MicroMally1 and links will be down in the description. We are deploying these uh, on the current track. Uh, we do believe that we could be having the potential to deploy these uh, out and uh, be able to kind of capture the raw fury and power of Tropical Storm Isaias uh, as it begins to uh, approach land here over the next couple of days. So once this now gets into, uh, once we start getting uh, warnings and everything else for Florida, we will start deploying these um, and uh, we're again very local tests so far uh, but we are uh, getting ready to put these in a fully operational use and this will be our first tropical cyclone as it stands currently if the forecast track does stand this will be our first tropical cyclone we get to use these cameras and so very uh, intriguing times ahead again the official forecast right now takes us uh, pretty close uh, to florida here Turks and Caicos, you need to be monitoring the Bahamas, Florida, all the way up to uh, really the Delfmar Peninsula there and New Jersey. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I will probably not be back this evening, but if anything significant does happen, of course, I will be sure to give a brief update here on YouTube. Uh, if not, go follow me on Twitter at MicroMally1. Links will be in the description down below. I am going to continuously update on there. And starting tomorrow, we will likely go three updates a day. All right. Have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I will talk to you later. I'm Mike Romali, and I will see you later.